Hello, everyone, and welcome back yellow. to another. Yeah, yeah, huh? Yellow. Yellow. I said hello. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, and welcome back to another 3D Buzz Training video, where we're going to be continuing with the AT-AT series. <laughs> I knew it was coming. Yes. All right, here I go. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is building this funny U piece that we've got here. And this is just kind of stand-in geometry that we won't be keeping. So let's start off by creating a cylinder. Okay. Now, this is a, actually a really complex piece of geometry. There's all sorts of stuff kind of going on with it. If we take a look at some uh, photos, so it's kind of, it's semicircular in its base form, but if you zoom up on it, which you do here, you know, it's, it's got a little semicircular bottom to it. I mean, it, it curves around there. It's got these channels carved into it all the way around. All sorts of interesting stuff taking place here. So I'm going to intentionally give most, if not all of you, a heart attack. A heart attack? A heart attack. Um, You're not going to model in the nude. Uh, well, I've done that before. I mean, because that wouldn't be good for me. Well, uh, you know, but it would no, make no, no, certain no, 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 amongst no, no. our user base want to rush right over, I'm no, no, no. sure. Well, they I'm, can party with you all day long. I won't let's, name names. Let's keep this professional. Just Well, I don't want anybody to feel like they're a cliche, so I won't name names. Oh. But anyways, so uh, what we're going to do... We don't want anyone to feel like we're picking on them, and we're obviously not. Well, sure we are. But, oh, well, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're not. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, you see how to play the game now. My mistake. We okay, are we so are not picking work, on work. them. Work. We gotta do some work. I'm working. All right. All right. So I'm gonna increase the radius on this guy out to about here. Actually, I need to increase a whole bunch of sides to this. So I'm gonna make this very round, uh, upwards of about 40 faces. And yeah, you know, I love the whole on the fly aspect of this show. I really do. Let's bring down the radius. I'm just trying to bring the radius down to uh, so that one of these edges kind of fits in here. Because if you take a look at the close-up, I'm trying to be as, as close to certain parts of the details as I can. This doesn't just end at a perfect half of a circle and then you know gracefully glide up. There's kind of an edge right there. You see it? Mm -hmm. It's like a circle around an edge. So I'm trying to get that look. And that's what's going to get everyone a heart attack. Oh, no, no, I'm saving that. I'm oh, saving that. Okay. That's, that's for a little bit down the road. Do not rush me or you will pay. <laughs> all right, um, let's hit uh, just this guy and hit four, grab all this stuff, delete, fantastic. And let's take all of our stuff and make it just a little bit more on the invisible side. Okay, now let's hit Z. Your monitor is tremendous, by the way. Uh, let's see, let's go to <laughs> well, edges. Thank you. <laughs> Why, thank you. Let's go to bridge. And we'll just bridge straight across to there, and we'll hit three, grab uh, you, ah, get out of the bridge tool, grab you, and you, and we're going to cap. Bink. Okay, so we've got the bottom, but we need to curve this all the way around. Now, I'm just going to build uh, half of this thing. Okay. So we're going to uh, bring this up to you know, about 90 degrees or so. Let's start off, we'll hit four and grab polygons. I'll grab this topmost polygon, and we'll extrude this. Now, I, I'll do this one by the numbers. We'll say we'll pull this to right about here and click OK. Now, the rest of these we want to start arcing around. I am assuming that because we are mounting a great big peg that kind of runs through everything, right. you like that peg, um, that this needs to be fairly flat, and then it's going to start rounding out. Sure. So, so I don't think it's going to be round all the way around. Round all the way around. That was... I should copyright that one. Okay, now, we're going to delete out that face for a second. So this is where things start to get a little weird. We're not to the heart attack level yet, but weird. Okay. All right. I'm going to extrude this edge out, and then extrude it out again, and then grab the, the polygon in the middle and nuke it. Now let's switch over to edges. And I need to check my snap settings. What do we have? So is this the heart attack part? No, no, that's coming. I'll tell you, okay? Okay, okay. I will contact you. You're going to give me a signal? Op or something. Options. Uh, use axis constraints and use axis center as snap point. Those are both good, and we need them in place. Uh, snapping to pivot is also good, and what we're going to do is start to move this edge, as you can see here, and let's, let me rotate to something that's a little bit easier to see. So we're moving that edge, mm -hmm. and while I'm moving it, I'm going to hit S and snap us to the pivot of that helper, which we know is centered up on our foot. Wow, if it was Maya, it'd be so much easier. Uh, I'm not commenting on that. I'm trying to to play the game like a nice... As a Maya user, I thought it was only fair if I said that. But that's cool. That's I, good. I hear okay. You. So, I hear you. so you've got to give. So it, I have done this. So you've got to give the edge a running start. Well, hang and on. And it can snap. Sort of. Okay. Uh, sort of. It's like we got to put it on ice, push, and then snap. All right. Anyways, anyways. So okay. now we're gonna switch over to hinge from edge, 
and it wants us to pick the hinge. That's going to be this fellow here, and we're going to rotate this guy up 90 degrees because we're only building half this thing, and now it's just increasing your segments until you get something nice. Now, what I would do if I was you is I would hit F4 to turn off those edges mm -hmm. and rotate around it a few times until you don't notice the nickeling anymore. Don't assume that you have to crank it up to 80 or you know 100 or something. Start very low and just gradually bring it up until from most angles it's going to look pretty good. Or you hit 80 or 100 or something. Or you hit 80 or 100 or so. I'm going to set mine to about 40, which is probably still just a little bit over the top, but it's going to work. Okay. So we'll hit OK, and there we go. So we have the basis of the piece um, set and ready to go. This doesn't really line up with your template geometry. And it's not going to, uh, oh. because this template geometry isn't exactly perfectly aligned. Okay. So we don't really have to worry about that. Now, uh, if there's little additions we want to make to kind of change that around, uh, we might have made this part, like the flattened a area, bit. a little tall. Yeah. So we could grab all of this and... Well, hey, it fits. And there you go. Now it fits. And everybody's happy. <laughs> I thought you said it wouldn't fit. You know, I just don't... You just model. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to. Uh... Oh, so now you're going to undo that. Uh, nice and, then, and then I'm going to hit Shift-Z for no reason. Um, I just, I just want to double-check something. I wanted to make sure I had that face selected down here, and mm. I wasn't sure if I did, so I did. So there we go. Now cool. everybody's happy, especially you, which yes. is good. Okay, so uh, let's see. Getting out of here, we need to start working on the channels that will run along either side. You can actually see these in the image planes. The grooves. I can see some sort of mus uh, muscle. Muscle. That's right. <laughs> Very no, muscular. this is not organic. I can see some sort of motor inside that uh, beefier piece that's driving some, you know, right. some gear that's going to basically run through probably some type of notches in those channels. Exactly. That's so we've it. got that to generate. So what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, let's a couple of things. First off, we've got our grid floating somewhere out here. I'm going to deactivate it. So basically just set us back to the home grid. Um, just as a matter you're of getting me seasick here, I, and that's because your scroll wheel snappies. Mm -hmm. and there's, it's snappies. It's snappies. It that's the official me, word. It's snappies. Well, you probably don't even use it for anything. Yeah, uh, I do. I disagree. I do. I guarantee that you do not. Uh, <laughs> you are lying to us. Nice try. You are fibbing, and it's not appreciated. Well, what if I was? What if you were what? <laughs> fibbing. Then it's irrelevant. See. Now my head hurts. <laughs> it really does. I, I didn't need that. Okay, uh, a couple of things. I would like a point helper. Uh, and just to make my life a little easier, so let's just drop in a uh, point. Let's see, it wants to create it up there. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, it's to point. use the tool. There you go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll just let that one slide. So let's bring this down here where we can actually see it for a second. And... S... You know, I, I don't know if I told you this, but mm -hmm. I, I did check the numbers for the first time on this the other day, and I was pretty surprised. We do have people watching this video. Actually, we have over 5,000 people oh, wow. watching. There's been over 5,000 people that have actually been going through all of these. And there's no pressure involved in that. I've been, I just pretend they're not there. <laughs> I've actually been pretty surprised. All right, so uh, all I'm doing is just snapping this guy over so that he's in line with that edge. Oh, I see. Because we're going we're gonna to make use of him in just a moment. Okay, so uh, let's hit S to get out of there. And uh, now, back over to this guy. Now, he's got a lot of edges. And I'm talking about this little pink uh, cylinder that I've made here. So let's frame up on him. He's got a lot more edges than he really needs. So let's go into his settings, and we can start pulling these down. What we want is something that still looks round, that of course we won't have to smooth. I'm not intending this to have any smoothing applied. Uh, okay, we're starting to see a little bit of nickeling there. 24 looks pretty good. I think from, from most rendering distances, 24 is going to do the job. It's a pretty good show, too. Uh-huh. All right. So, uh, let's just saying I, I hear you. I, that's that's awesome. All right. I want to select this guy now. Let's convert him over to a notable poly. Let's hit four, grab you, flip inside, and grab you. And we're going to do something kind of special here. We're going to tessellate this thing according to its options, switch over to faces. So it's coming like right from the vertices and click OK. And there we go. All right. Now, jump over to the side view. It'll make things a little bit easier to see. Also, let's grab our material and we'll pop it on this guy for now, uh, if it will allow the, us. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, thank you. I know, but it's like yeah, I, I don't like that behavior. It's it's kind of irritating to me. Um, it's very irritating to me. And I just made a user view. 
Did you? You, yeah. you? you love those, don't you? I do. I really do. You know, is it uh, is it the fact that perhaps you have... I don't know, but I'm nuking that guy. <laughs> there we go. Oh, fantastic. Now, what was this supposed to be? Like an L view or something? I'll just hit L and put it there anyway. I don't know what it was supposed to be, but it's going to be there now. Okay, so we've got our, uh, our little cylinder here, and good, it was supposed to be a side view. Apparently, I kept hitting that little default piece of uh, reference geometry. That was, that's what was killing me. We're going to grab all these guys and delete them. Are you confused yet? Yeah, I was just, you could have froze it if you didn't want to be so harsh and delete it. No, I need it gone. I need it dead and out of here. I'm with you. No, you're not. You, you don't know. All right, so now let's grab you. We're going to snap over to, well, that guy's fine. I don't really care. Just something so he is nice and even and level with everybody else. And that's all looking good so far. Okay, now I know it seems really, well, it might. Some of you might already be like, oh, I see exactly what you're doing. And the rest of you are probably not. Let's get rid of that. I now have a suspicious, or suspicious. Suspicious. I am suspicious because you I have a suspicion of what you are about together. to do. With suspicious minds. Okay, boom. That's how deep do we want that to go? That's you, a real question. Yeah, you are going to give people a heart attack. Uh huh. You already you feel you, it. You have you? this one special member who's going to come back on giving you lectures too. I know it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. <laughs> okay, let's make a copy, and I'm going to rotate this thing. Uh, let's make sure it's at 90 degrees, and I want to align it to my uh, to the piece here. So let's grab our align tool, clink, clunk, and we don't need to align it to everything. So uh, I think just X is going to be fine. So he's right in the dead center, and then we're going to slide him back in. So that's also determining the depth of our groove. Mm -hmm. We could also, if we were feeling particularly industrious, uh, we could go ahead and attach these two pieces together. And... You got me chewing on my nails now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I know. It's great. I'm getting nervous. Make sure okay. you hold before you do too much more. Uh, I guess that's not a bad idea. So let's hold this. Okay, now we're going to rotate, but we're going to switch over to pick. We're going to grab this little point helper. It says object 2. That's not what I want. I actually want that point helper. Thank you. Okay, so we've picked him. Let's go to reference coordinate center. And you'll notice if you look really close that these grooves don't really start down here at the, at the base. They start kind of mm -hmm. halfway up where things start to turn. So I'm going to make a little bit of use of that. We're going to rotate both these guys up. Now there's 10 degrees. That'll probably work out pretty well. Maybe an extra five. So if, eh, no, 15's a little. I don't know. That could work if we had the little peg there on the side, and then I'm just looking, and there's the big thing up front. I think that's going to be fine. Okay. So we'll go with that. Okay. So now let's hit four, and we're going to go over to polygons. Are you scared yet? Yeah, very. Okay. And uh, there's some other stuff that we want to do here. You see this polygon that I was using to hinge from? Yeah, yeah. We need him. Okay. So that's a little bit of an issue. So what I'm going to do is grab that polygon, and we're going to scroll down here and detach it. Boom. And it can just be object one. It's just its its own thing now. Goodbye. So let's get out of here. I want to grab that little guy by himself. Thank you. And to him, we will attach these guys. Okay. So now they're all part of the same thing. Mm-hmm. So now let's hit four, and we don't want that polygon. We just want these two polygons, and we want to... Dun, 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 dun. Hinge from edge, pick our hinge, that'll be this guy, and he's got all the same settings, which is not really all that good. Okay. We rotated 90 degrees, but we already rotated these guys up 15. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be uh, 90 minus 15, which is what, 75, I think? You're asking me to do math? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Wow, did again. you actually get it? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we gave it 40 divisions, which is kind of cool in and of itself. But let's see, we had a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 that we don't use. So let's just try pulling this down to 34 and just seeing how well these edges line up. I do not expect them to be perfect. I do expect there to be some necessary cleanup when I get done here. But I just need to get them close. So they start off close, and they're going to start getting kind of nasty as we go down through here. But So what happens if you just sit there and you like... Click play down with one and take and a look. Just sit there and play. I can probably get them to the point where they're going to line up pretty well. Okay. If you can go back some. Yeah, back. Let's see. You can get them to line up on one side, and they'll start to fall off by the time you make it to the other. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, you're, I'm sure that there's some formula or algorithm you could employ to get this to line up perfectly. I don't know it, nor do I care to learn it. <laughs> this is going to work out just fine. It's just going to take a little bit of TLC to make it all work out in the very end. So there's 
30, I, I don't know. I think we were better off around 34 or something, just to keep the rounding for now. Okay. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And that's looking good. And you already know that we're, uh, we're here to cause mental damage to people with what we're about to do. So here's all of that kind of starting to work out. Now the next thing is we have to look at the picture one more time. So we've got, if we zoom in, there's a little hole right there. I know it's a little hard to make out, but it's there. And uh, let's see, what other uh, references can we find that will help us out? I don't think. I mean, well, the, the image planes, of course, you're going to see something. So that's good. But I don't know if, like, if we have any other real close-ups. The, now, these aren't studio models, so it's really a question of whether or not you want to uh, make use of them. I mean, I have off and on, so really, I guess you could just kind of take your pick. Let's see, do I have anything here that's going to be useful? No. There's a little hole there. I guess that's all we have and all we really need to work with. All right, so now let's create another cylinder here in the side view. So we'll go to Create, go to Primitives, make a cylinder, and we'll just plug you right here. Notice I still have Auto Grid on. And we're only going to shove this in about yay so far. Notice I'm not even remotely worried about what's going on on the opposite side. Okay. Don't even stress it. And we could probably slide this down a little bit, say to right about here. Now, how many uh, edges does he have? It should still be like 24 or something, and it is, and that's cool. Um, I'm just going to center it up by eyeball. I think that looks pretty good, and I think with that, we're all set. Okay, so now it's time for a heart attack. So here's your signal. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Whew, um, not, yeah. not a nice signal. But no, not a nice signal, but thank you. A, I... a signal nonetheless. <laughs> yes, it was. So let's grab this, and we're going to go to Compound Objects, click on Boolean, pick Operand B, and just chop those guys out. So they're gone. And uh, overall, it's looking pretty good, if uh, but but not beautiful by any means. I'm actually shocked it turned out that clean. Well, it, it, <laughs> yes and no, yes and no. I mean, it looks really good right now, but there's going to be some extra edges that will get created. Mm -hmm. And the real question is whether or not you want to spend some time cleaning them up. Mm -hmm. Now, because I'm planning on running uh, a bevel around through here and whatnot to make these edges look nice, it will be to my benefit to take the time to clean these edges up. So I am going to be. Okay. Uh, it's not the fastest operation in the world, but some things aren't. Uh, let's go ahead and pick up and B, chop that out. You notice those edges now appear. Yeah, now that's uh, looking a little that, bit more. A little more like what you're used yep. to with uh, a little bit of, ah. Okay, so that's looking okay so far. Let's go ahead and convert this back over to an editable poly, and we're going to do something else that's kind of interesting. Let's jump over to the front view of it. Let's grab vertices. Let's get the slice plane out. And let's see, we need to rotate that slice plane. Uh, let's see, what are you set to right now? 180 degrees? Let's just set you to 90. Okay, it, it's and still... It's still, yeah. It's, yeah. It kind of says no. And there we are with the user view again. I'm so used to different viewport layout. It's really kind of fantastic in its <laughs> way. All right, so if we can't do it one way, we'll just do it another. Now, what I want to do is come into the front view and just verify that we're not too far off you will notice little things like this, mm -hmm. where if you zoom really, really, really close in, you're actually off by a little bit. Um, so, you know, we could try chugging these over. We can also play with snapping. Ha, ha, ha. And just see where that gets us. Let me get my move tool out, and let's move this thing down here where I can actually see it. And we'll zoom in really, really close. See, here's part of the problem, it looks like. It looks like our pivot is off or something is rotated, so... And it doesn't look like there's any major rotation, does it? No. So let's just hit E. Um, 89.53 should probably be 90, so that'll help that. Everything else is nicely squared up at this point. So, we'll just double check... Get out Yon Slice Plane again. And get our move tool. Now, why is our slice plane rotated so? It's just the pivot for the thing. It's okay. I'm Peek. just going to get it as close as I can and call it. So we'll slice that, close that out. 
and just back out. Now, let's hit 4 to go to polygons. I'm going to switch over to windowed mode. Let's make sure I didn't select anybody I didn't want to. That looks pretty good. Hit delete. And there we go. Now, if I switch back over, well, let's try this. Are we getting anything? No polygon selected. Good. So there's no little tiny hidden polygons in there, which is all I wanted to check. Okay, now, time for the very super exciting process of cleaning up this object, which looks scarier than it really is. Really, this is not so bad. I have seen much, much worse. I'm going to switch over to edges, and we'll start off... Z so I can frame up on these. We'll start off by removing some of these edges that we don't need. Now, when you remove these edges, be sure that you're hitting the backspace key and not delete. Because if you hit delete, you get something like that, which is generally not, not good, not advised, not what you're chasing. I suppose it would be easiest for me to start down here right. and then work my way up. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's uh, start off at vertices, and I'll grab the target weld, and we're just going to take you and weld you up. I'll take this guy and target weld again. I must have hit the right mouse button. And we'll weld him up. Now, I want to just anchor these off. I don't want any of these edges, at least on the outside, mm -hmm. to be unresolved. I want them all to be nice and uh, at least, they don't necessarily have to be quadded, but something where I can feel comfortable about doing a bevel without having anything floating. I just want to go on record saying this. If this object isn't going to deform, you don't necessarily have to do this. But it's good practice. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're doing it. Uh, what I'm going to do is take a look. Now, this circle that we've got here, we can grab our cut tool. Um, this guy can probably go out. I think, really, it's, it's this vertex that would go out to the corner. So now let's match him up on the other side. So that would be this vertex, like so. So we have one edge that would run all the way around here. If we want this to be nice and even, we can say you... Oh, get out of the cut tool, grab you, and you, and you and you, and we can connect these. Now if we get the cut tool back out, which is way down here, we can cut that, and we can cut that. Okay, now let's just count up our edges in here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven edges. So now we'll just get out of the cut tool, grab you, ring, way up here at the top, and then hit connect. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looking good. Grab our cut tool again. We could probably also just, as an option, delete that face out and bridge these over, which might be faster. I don't know. It just depends on how you wanted to use the tool. But I thought I'd present that. Okay, so there you go. So now cool. that's looking much cleaner. No just you know random geometry plugged in there. So now we start doing the same thing over here on the opposite side. Let's switch back over to vertices. We'll go to target weld, and we'll weld this guy in. And we'll weld this guy in. Now we have two vertices on either side here that need to be anchored. So we'll grab these four and let's connect them and that's just going to be by two click OK no cameras in scene don't hit the C key for whatever reason and hit cut cut all right now we need to start branching out, and this is where things start to get fun. Now this next vertex up can just be anchored to the corner. And so you are awfully quiet, and it's freaking me out. Just staring. I just thought I'd share that with you. You're starting to kind of scare me. <laughs> just watching. Okay. I mean, you know, it's fine and stuff, but it, it's just a little disconcerting. All right, so we have one edge on either side. It should be pretty much a foredrawn conclusion. We could just cut these down. I mean, you see where we're going, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's just cleaning up stuff like this is not always the world's fastest operation, nor is it the most fun, i found. All right. But you do end up with some nice circles cut in. Uh-huh. 
Okay, so now this circle has been all cleaned up. Mm -hmm. Now, the cool thing here is that uh, with this looking so nice, we could just chamfer this one edge and get a nice even chamfer all the way around without weird edges being added in, without uh, as much of a possibility of funny rendering glitches popping up, all sorts of reasons to go through with this. All right, so now I'm going to just kind of start working my way up. So let's get out of the cut tool. And it looks like we don't really need this guy. Also, double check and make sure we're not stranding any vertices, which, you know, here's one that was stranded. We can kill him out. Uh, these need to be brought out to the corners because we don't have anywhere to attach them downstairs. So we'll take you out to the corner. And we can go ahead and take you out to the corner, too, even though we haven't got rid of this guy just yet. Now... All of these look like they're cutting out pretty well. We don't really need that edge. Now, you'll notice I'm leaving uh, corresponding vertices behind. If you don't want to do that, then all you need to do is come over here, and uh, you can hold on Control and hit Backspace. I believe that'll get rid of them. Yeah. But I just I wasn't hitting both buttons at the same time, so that's kind of my fault. So Control, Backspace, and let's see this guy will he's kind of tied into the circle there but we can take this one out so we'll just hit backspace on him and oh so yeah it's definitely looking kind of interesting so you deleted that one out just a second ago but it still had an edge that ran down into the circle right so this guy here yeah is this one you're talking about because what we're going to do with him dum, 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 dum. i can get my cut tool back out is we're going to slice him around to here, nice and straight, and then straight out through there. I got you. Okay. Now, uh, we can start corresponding these with uh, vertices on the opposite circle, and that can kind of start helping us out. So here, this guy reaches around, and you know he's got all these different branches. It looks like, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. One, four, five. Okay, good. So one, two, three, four, five. He should be going into that one. So these edges here and here can be removed. Now, just to speed things up, we'll go ahead and nuke all these guys out too. And so now this next vertex goes down to the corner because I'm just following the same pattern I had on the other side. So that's now nicely quadded. Now that leaves us one, two, three edges that need to run all the way down around the face of this thing. So uh, we'll grab this edge, scroll up, let's ring it, and it goes all the way down to there, which is fine. Now let's connect this up, and we need a total of three, and we can also make use of slide and maybe a little bit of pinch because they don't necessarily need to, to spread all the way across. You'll end up with some funky triangles right there. Also, you know, doing this, doing what I'm doing right now, will make it a little easier to read the faces if you make a texture layout, uh, so that you don't have a whole bunch of really crazy triangles when you go to lay out your UVs. Right. Don't worry about the fact that this guy terminates down here. We'll deal with that shortly. Let's uh, just kind of start working our way up the rest of the shape for now. This edge looks like it could go bye-bye or it could just cut the rest of the way across. Let's go ahead and make it go bye-bye. Let's grab you and uh, control backspace. I need a much cooler keyboard than the one I have. <laughs> Uh, let's see, and that can go, that should have been a control backspace, so we'll just jump in here and we'll remove these guys. I'll keep track of that one these years, I'm sure. And you know what it is? It's because my control key and my backspace key are all the way across the keyboard, and mm -hmm. usually I find myself using hotkeys that are on the left-hand side of the keyboard. It's just a, it's a personal thing. All right. So this is where we kind of start falling into a little bit of tedium because we're just carefully welding and adjusting vertices to make everything work out. So uh, let's go over to um, target weld and uh, vertices and target weld. We can bring this guy down and we can bring this guy down and we can bring this guy down. Um, 
might not be a bad idea to insert another one before we branch out too far. Maybe this will keep working. It's doing okay so far. You know, starting to get a little closer to the opposite side now. So what I'm going to do is, well, since we're kind of up inside the machine anyway, mm -hmm. um, let's see, are we going to run out? They're actually going to start lining up before all is said and done. So we're going to end up with an extra guy here. So let's get the cut tool out. And we could probably actually just remove one of these edges, but instead we'll we'll cut it around. And that'll make a flat spot there. I mean, that might be just barely noticeable um, if this whole thing was rotated around, but I don't ever anticipate it rotating around that far. So we won't worry about it. I'll switch over to target welding again and click, click. The rest of these, I could probably do a marquee selection and just do a weld. Okay, looking good so far. Now that isn't, it looks like an extra polygon we don't need, so let's go ahead and just remove him out and remove that out. We don't need that either. Oh, it looks like there's all sorts of stuff here we don't need. And we're set over to window instead of crossing. We can use crossing. Okay, cool. And go ahead and hold for me. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. All right, so now we move up to the top side of this thing, and we've kind of got the same job to do. And it looks like these are well, they're doing okay. I'd just... start working out in the visible area first. You think so? Yeah, because that's what we did last time. Yeah, just you know, because you know that's the best explanation ever. This is the visible area. No, no, no just stick with stick with what you had. Okay, because you know, because you know, you know. All right, control backspace, control backspace, control backspace, control backspace. And these look like they're just going to start off with a bunch of that control backspacing. can go, I mean, we're getting to a point where you could start splitting them the other way if you wanted to. So let's try that. Oh, I didn't mean to turn anybody, really. We just want to cut you down to about there. And then switch back over to edges and we can get these guys and control backspace. And now we'll, we're just removing in the other direction. Sort of. Right, yeah. No, wait, no I'm not. <laughs> No, you're not. You should be target welding and then removing. Clink. Clink. I'll get all my welding done, then I'll come back and yeah. be all vicious with my deletions. We're going to have to do some dinner here soon. I'm starving, man. Yeah, I'm getting there myself. I need, um, I need food. Maybe people who are watching this need food, too. Now's a good time for everyone to hit pause and go eat. All right. Well, you know, some modeling tasks are faster than others. I'm not complaining. This is one of the ones that is not so very fast. Okay, cool. Now, this has a nice little cut point that we can reach right out to. That takes care of that. And now it's just a matter of jumping in here and removing out these unnecessary diagonals. Let's just backspace those out, and what's going on here? Oh uh, yeah, there's the one we had to insert in the middle, just like the the last time. Mm -hmm. 
so uh, let's see. We could switch over. Then uh, again, we're kind of back up inside the machine, so this won't really make much of a difference. But let's just turn on edge constraints, and we'll slide this down just a little bit. And we'll deal with that shortly. Now let's jump back over to the cut tool, and we can cut this up. And if it'll play helpful for just a minute, we can cut it out to there. Okay, now all of that is cleaned up. Cool. Now we just need to finish up what's going on here at the outside, down the middle. Mm -hmm. And we're all done. So let's start off, I suppose, with... Wait a minute. There's something still a little wonky. Hmm? Or, or is that what you're getting to This, now? this is what I'm doing. Oh, die. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we, we, did, we did the side groove. Now we got to do yeah, the middle yeah. groove. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. It's easy to lose track because there's so much stuff that you got to kind of clean yeah, up. Yeah, I thought you were talking about doing something else. I was like, wait a minute. That whole thing there is messed up. <laughs> but just me personally, I find this process easier than trying to create a complex shape like this with precision anyway. So. And yeah, let's see if we can make that work all the way to the inside. Yeah, that's probably a good enough stopping point. Um, <laughs> it's, it's like I'm a moral dilemma as to which direction I want to go there. Great, now I'm blind. I mean, just how awful is it going to look if you slide some of those uh, vertices along the edge to uh, straighten things? I mean, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't really even be able to tell that. Yeah, that's much. what I was thinking. I'm just going to pull this guy out of the way for now. Yeah, you can make it look all nice and neat and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm going to do that, then I might as well stick with the current pattern that I'm on. And then we can just go through and systematically slide everybody after the fact. Like I'm just driving your alt key down through the keyboard, you hear that? Yeah, I do actually. <laughs> yeah. So even though they are getting kind of distant, because we're going to slide everybody back, we'll just stick with what we were doing. Whoop. And then we finally run into this guy. Yeah. Who's going to be? We can just cut across. Or we could probably remove him altogether when all is said and done. True. In fact, let's just let's just see how that works. I'm just curious. Control backspace, and it says no. I will not remove him for you. Okay, fine, whatever. Okay, so now let's make sure that edge constraints are on, and uh, you just grab each one of these and start lining up the associated edge. So I'm not going to plan on doing this like absolutely perfectly, mm -hmm. but it'll look better than it did. Even though I'm, you know, I'm Fairly certain that that little bit of lean that's taking place there mm -hmm. wouldn't kill anybody. Yeah, I know. But if you were insistent on removing that for whatever reason, you could. You could probably do this through snapping if you were if you're really interested in tediousness. Mm hmm And it would be precise. Because uh, snapping should still respect the fact that edge constraints are on. So, I mean, theoretically, it would work. I'm just going to get it close and call it close enough. Whoop. Yeah, I would, I would insert a... There you That's go. No problem. Nice, sort of. It's kind of funny, actually. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. 
Laugh Riot. I'll be here all week for you. I know. I just can't wait for it to be over. Um, let's see. Let's do to you. I wish you could pick walk. I mean, that was awesome. And yeah, we're getting to a point where I have to move in different directions now. And we're also getting to a point where these aren't so far off that it really matters. Very true. All right. A little tilted. But I'm going to assume that I mean, like, from here, when you just solidify the thing and look at it, it looks fine. Mm -hmm. So we'll just go with it. Okay, so that means everything is all cleared up. Uh, now what we need to do is uh, get this symmetrized over to the opposite side. So let's grab this. Let's get the uh, Mighty Mighty Symmetry Modifier. And that looks good. So let's just go ahead and immediately convert this over to its own brand spanking new editable poly. So we don't need the symmetry modifier anymore. Let's jump over here to the side view. I'll have four for polygons. Let's make sure we're in windowed mode. Grab these polygons here on the end and delete them. Now, it'd probably be a good idea to make sure that we don't need any other shapes or adjustments or things added in before. Like, we don't need to do any more modeling before we dupe over. Well, did you want to chamfer any of the... Uh, yeah, I do. I've got a lot of chamfering I want to do. So, let's hit F4 so I can see what I'm selecting. We'll hit number two. Now, let's see. What do I get when I hit a loop? I imagine, yeah, it's going to have little issues because of all the cool, awesome things the geometry is doing. Let's loop all that. It's close. Oh, it doesn't want to loop this at all. That's disappointing. I'll check that out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll fix it, but that's probably where our I don't want to edge loop thing comes from. I don't know if you got on the bottom. Yeah. And down low, lower. Okay. I think we're okay for this one edge. You'll find out real quick. Yeah, we'll know in just a moment. Do a quick hold. Yeah, I guess. And let's chamfer. And we don't need anything super heavy. And we certainly shouldn't need more than one segment, but I mean, you could add one if you wanted to. Just know that when you add segments, you're going to have cleanup to do. Just you know, as you can see there. Now, again, we're building a big, large scale thing. You just got to keep that in mind. And unless you're planning on having an animation where somebody is walking around on the, or on the foot, mm -hmm. how much detail is enough? Just kind of ask yourself that question. I'm thinking something right around here is going to look just fine. And that's at 0.25 on my chamfer amount. Okay. Okay. Oh, and let's make sure that we do hit apply there. And we'll cancel out. Now, it'd probably be a good idea for me to go ahead and fix these real quick before I go much further. Because if I don't, I You'll forget. forget. <laughs> and I want to try something. Um, let's see here. If I can hit the four key and grab you and you and hit delete. And bridge on across. Yeah. I don't know how well it's going to work, but I'm going to try it anyway. Um, let's Grab uh, two edges, grab bridge, and use edge selection. It, I don't know whether it's going to let me or whether it's going to play nice. But it, I should be able to add a segment, so it should play relatively nice. Okay, and then if I add a segment, I get a center line that I can just... Grab and round it out. And we could probably pop out here to the front view, hit F3, and zoom in really, really close. Bink. And then, yeah, I mean, close is going to be close enough here. And so now it would just be a matter of uh, grab, there's two vertices, and let's see, this should make it four vertices, and we should be able to weld back to two, and that's good. Okay. All right, so that takes care of that. We have some more chamfering to do, so let's switch back to edges. Now, what happens if I loop this? Uh, better. Not perfect, but better. 
And that just leaves these guys. Oh, you see what the problem is? Yeah. Right. You find there. them. Mm -hmm. You do find There's them. There's another one. Yep. All right. So now can we loop around? Loop. Hey, sweet. Hey, all right. So we chamfer and 0.25, and it gives us a little bit of funniness right here because that edge is so close we can fix that manually. So don't worry there. Let's go ahead and hit OK, and then we'll jump in here and take a look at this little problem. Uh, we'll slide this down, and let's grab you. And Aha, there's a reason for there's a problem. another one. So maybe a couple undos. Ah, uh, I'd love to. I'd also love to get you know focus on what it is I want to look at. Let me just see if I can just nuke that guy out and he'll solve the problem. He seems to. And that looks pretty good. Let's just get out of here real quick. Press F4 and get out of sub-object mode. And some smoothing group issues aside, I think that's going to work. Cool. All right. So I'm coming back over here. And if we loop this, we get almost everything. So do we have some more of the same types of issues and it doesn't look like it. It just looks like it doesn't want to loop that. Now, there we go. Mm -hmm. As long as you find them. Yep. Which means we've got one on the opposite side too. And we got a little triangle there too. He just got overlooked. That's all that is. Um, so he should have been anchored off to the opposite side and I just never did it. Run one on around. Yeah. Kind of embarrassing, but no problem. We'll slide. Oh, you still have edge constraints on? Nope. But you should. Yep. All right. Let's switch over <clears throat> to Mighty Mighty Cut Tool. Pink. I haven't called it that in a while. All right. Alright, so it's not exactly perfect, but it should work out just fine. Okay, now, um, number two again. <laughs> and uh, let's see what happens if we loop that. Okay, it doesn't want to play super nice with everything, but I don't see any real problems coming out of it. Okay. So let's cham for that. Oh, there is some sort yep. of problem there. Yep. I was afraid of that. Just look for two verts. Two yep. vertices there. And four vertices. Let's just hit weld and those become two again. Jump back over to edges and hit cham for again. And There's we have another down problem there. down here. So let's cancel out of that. Four vertices selected? No. Vertex 110, two vertices selected. A couple of guys who are really close, but not quite solved. All right, chamfer again. It looks like we are almost set to go. I don't know what's up with that. Vertex 156. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I probably grabbed the wrong one. No, there were four there before. Unless I undid something. I don't know. Anything's possible. Sweet. Double check the other side. Everything's looking good. Click OK. And we're set. Cool. So the last thing I want to do is grab you and let's loop that. Hey, that one just works. And so does that one. So we can just cham for these as well. And hit OK. And the basis for this piece is pretty much done. Nice. So now let's grab it, make sure this is still all open ended, which it is. Let's grab the symmetry modifier again. This time we're just going to choose a different axis. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I always assume that I've just got the mirror selected. I never do. It's just an old habit. All right, boom, and uh, we're going to have to snap this guy. So let's see here, click. So he should be right in place. And let's get out of there. In fact, let's go ahead and just convert this back over to a new editable poly. And we're set. Very nice.
So I think this is a good enough stopping point because we've carried on for a while, I'm yeah. sure. So that will wrap things up for this video. Thank you very much, and I hope to see you on the next Ad At video. Thanks a lot, guys.